Welcome into the Republic of Football podcast. I'm your host for today, Carter Yates. With me as always in Mission Control, everyone's favorite Mal pal, Miss Mallory Hartley. Hi, everyone. Uh, it's a big day. Portal's open. The spring transfer portal window's open. And uh, we've been sitting at our desk all day, pretty much figuring it all out, putting the pieces together. And uh, it's going to be a big show. Pretty much be, all about the portal. It's so. going to be a pretty big show. And it's just me and you today, our buddy Schmale is in Waco <laughs> today and will not be with us. Mike Craven is down in College Station at Texas A&M finishing up our magazine tour right now. But don't worry, me and Mallory got you covered here. Totally. Man, you've been doing a lot of magazine stuff too. I mean, I know this is like your second full season doing the magazine, but like mm -hmm. you've already made a ton of stops, right? For I made a ton as in one. I went uh -huh. to Sam Houston in Huntsville, which is my first okay. time ever. I thought you've been to more. Maybe not. Maybe I'm lying. No, just Sam Houston. I've been busy, though. I've been, I've, been, I've been putting my nose on the grindstone, but only one stop to Sam Houston, which was a great time, by the way. Beautiful campus down there. Mm -hmm. A lot of exciting stuff going on with Sam Houston in their second year in the FBS. But, Mallory, I've been super nervous right now because this Why are you is, nervous? But this is my first magazine we're doing full-time where I'm writing about college programs and their teams. And... The transfer portal just opened yesterday. Yeah. So take you behind the curtain a little bit. We're still working on a magazine, and I don't want to be like Sports Illustrated where they put Deion Sanders on the cover of Sports Person of the Year because those magazine deadlines come out four months in advance, right? Right. So right. I was sitting yesterday, and I've been uh -huh. so nervous because Josh Pate at Pate State he sent out a tweet about two months ago and said Caden Proctor, the Alabama offensive tackle returning from Iowa to Alabama is not even the top three wildest things I've heard. Like spring portal is going to be chaotic. It's going to be, it's going to be absolutely chaotic. And we've already kind of gotten a taste of that. We'll talk a little bit more about that today, but just some of the additions that some of these teams have been able to pick up this, this last, these last couple of weeks, I should just say, I mean, it's been, it's been kind of crazy. Yes. It, huge yesterday, additions. Huge additions today. Okay. So it broke today, but yesterday nothing happened yet. I felt like, have you ever seen Christmas Vacation? Yeah. Where Clark Griswold is like, you know, putting the lights together and expecting the house to blow up and it never happens. That's what it felt like yesterday. I love that movie so much. That's a great analogy. It's the best Christmas movie there is. Well, that's debatable, but. What's your favorite Christmas movie? The Grinch. Oh, okay. Yeah. I mean, who, who doesn't like The Grinch? The live action one, the Jim Carrey one? Um, I would say, yeah, the Jim Carrey one, the live action one. The okay. best, because the best part about that is that there are a couple of like adult jokes hidden within the movie. So mm -hmm. you don't catch it as a kid, but when you go back and watch it later on, you catch all of them and it's just, it's so much it's better. It's very rewarding. <laughs> it's very yes, rewarding to go correct. back and watch. So yeah. today we've had the first domino start to fall. Correct. So Houston has lost Sam Brown, their leading receiver from last year, who I said last week was the best receiver on Houston's team even above Matthew Golden, who transferred to Texas. And then TCU just had a huge loss in defensive tackle Dominic Williams. He started 27 games in his first two years at TCU. It's been tough for our power four teams in Texas today, Mallory. Yeah, it's been really tough. I kind of want to hit on the Sam Brown news because I was scrolling through Twitter this morning, kind of looking at what we want to do for ROF. And I saw he, he put out a post actually last night, Sam Brown did on his own personal Twitter, saying that he intends to enter the transfer portal. I don't think he's actually done it yet, but obviously he intends to. And then it got me thinking like, oh, well, he's not going to be there. Matthew Golden's not going to be there. Mm -hmm. Who is, who's going to have to step up in their place? And that's, of course, we've got Joseph Manjack. Joey Manjack. Joey Manjack. And he was great for them last year. He was really, really good. But they also had some help from Matthew Golden, right? And Sam Brown. Mm -hmm. Then they've got a transfer coming in. A tied end someone from you're the Michigan State University. Malik some, Carr. Someone you're very familiar very, with. Very, very familiar with him. Do you think that they're going to have to utilize the tight end a little bit more now that uh, two of their top receivers are gone? I think they are going to have go, they're going to have to because two, like you said, two of the top receivers are gone. What we've seen from Malik Carr in spring practice is he's a big guy. He is six foot six and all of it, and they're splitting him he's out huge. wide now. Houston didn't really use a tight end very much uh, last year mm -mm. because I don't think they had a game changer there. Malik Carr could be that game changer for them. 
You got to remember they also lost Dalton Carnes too to right. your other school, North Texas. So right. they are down receivers big time. Do you have a scouting report on this guy? Malik Carr? Yes. He's big. Big. And he's really, really good. He was a, I mean, he was, he was huge at Michigan State. I just don't think he got enough playing time, and I think he wanted more playing time. Mm -hmm. um, and obviously, new personnel coming in at Michigan State with Jonathan Smith there at the helm, so I'm not sure really what they, that would have looked like for him. So I think that coming back, and he's, and he's played, I think he was at Purdue before he was even at Michigan State. So he's been in the Power Four for a long mm -hmm. time. So I think he's only going to get better from – transferring from a, a, a Big Ten Power Four to the Big 12. But here's what surprised me today is I wrote a column two days ago about the spring transfer portal windows here, should you care? Because us as college football fans, we have a lot of stuff pulling at our attention span, right? Mm -hmm. The season's, the next season starts before last season ends when the transfer portal opens in December. You've got two signing days now. We just got our roster intact with spring ball and now you're expecting me to ramp back up again for another transfer portal. Right. And my thing to Power Four fans was, you can kind of take this time off a little bit. Like you might pick up some group of five guys right. who can be solid depth pieces for you but by and large don't waste your 100 percent energy when your team needs it in the fall and then tcu loses a starting defensive tackle and houston loses the top wide receiver so my bad yeah i mean it's it's kind of all over the place right now but uh uh some good additions um coming to these teams too so Yes, exactly. And let's talk about, let, we started off a little bit downtrodden. Okay, let's now talk about our favorite transfer portal classes from okay. not even just the spring, from starting in the winter period right here. So Mallory, give me, give me who you think your favorite transfer portal class is thus far. Well, I kind of already gave it away on the lower third because I listed three Oh, you gave, oh, the you gave up the goods. <laughs> I know, oh. I gave up the goods. I maybe shouldn't have done well, that. Well, I can't see the lower third, so who is you, it? You can't see the lower third, but we also already discussed this earlier, so you already know exactly what I'm going to say. I don't know. Okay. We'll see. I think uh, starting off, Texas A&M. What? Crazy, right? They bring in a whole wad of transfers bunch from power fours, a couple from G5s, but they bring in a whole wad of transfers. I think Texas is my next option. They didn't bring in nearly as many, but I feel like those transfers have more of an impact. Like mm -hmm. the difference between Texas A&M, who Texas A&M have brought in and who Texas has brought in. Obviously Texas A&M, I think they've brought in a ton more, right? The guys that Texas has brought in are probably players that are all gonna make an immediate impact, mm -hmm. right? Uh I think what that the reason that's happening is because Texas A&M had a new coach in Mike Elko. So Correct. if he gets this thing rolling, he'll end up being like Texas, where we can pick and choose and only take eight or so guys. Right now, it's total roster turnover because what happened when Elijah Robinson, the interim head coach, the defensive line coach from last year, who gave the most impassioned locker room speeches I've ever heard, he mm -hmm. takes him and his guys to Syracuse. Syracuse. They lose Walter Nolan to Ole Miss. They lose Fadil Diggs to Syracuse. Uh, they also lost McKinley Jackson, I believe. They have to just totally revamp and, and right, remake right. themselves. Right. And so a lot of it is just kind of like, I mean, fluff, you know, like a lot of it, a lot of these players are probably not going to make an immediate impact. You know, they're there to build depth at some of those positions. But I believe that Texas, all the guys that they're bringing in, they're probably going to make an immediate impact. Like a couple, obviously, Matthew Golden, we talked about him a little bit coming from Houston. Um, definitely Isaiah Bond, I think, coming mm -hmm. in from Alabama. Give me a couple of years you think from Texas that are going to make probably the biggest impact. I think, you, I think you said part of it right there is definitely Isaiah Bond. I think right now they think he's going to step into that Xavier Worthy number one target role. Right there, we got to remember Texas lost three NFL caliber receivers in Xavier Worthy, A.D. Mitchell, and Jatavion Sanders at tight end. So now they're really relying on Isaiah Bond to be that next guy. Also, going to the defensive side of the ball, I think someone we're not talking enough about is Andrew Makuba. Makuba from Clemson. Dude, he's electric. He was an Austin LBJ star. He yep. was the year they made the state championship game, right? Yeah, I was there. Uh-huh. I was on the sidelines with him. Oh, nice. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he was that, was that also the Cedric Alexander team, the running back? That guy was a monster. He's I, at Vanderbilt now. I don't remember. You'd have to give me the year. But you remember Andrew Makuba. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, he's, 
he's fast and he's electric. I think he's going to fit in super well. And that's the thing with the Texas defense is, yes, it was so much improved last year, but also playing in the past happy Big 12, they were 113th in the nation mm -hmm. in, in passing yards allowed per game. Now they're doing a full reset, right? Last year, it was Jaron Thompson and Michael Taff. Michael Taff, your dad's favorite player, by the way, because I all my friends from college, all their dads love Michael Taff. Okay, I'll and have I, to ask my dad. Ask your dad <laughs> if, what he thinks about number 16 on Texas, because everyone's dad loves that guy. Because, I mean, he's a, he's a baller. He plays really well on special teams. I don't know if he'll be starting as much as he was last year. It seems like it's going to be Derek Williams, who was a five-star recruit from two years ago, and now Andrew Makuba there mm -hmm. so that's something where when we talk about the spring game later i want to see what the defensive backfield looks like they also have xavier filsamy there mm -hmm. from mckinney mm -hmm. and i think the corners for texas are set right now with malik muhammad yeah. and terrence brooks on the other side i think malik muhammad has been the mvp of spring camp at this point for texas i would honestly say that that's probably like one of the strongest strongest units in the nation in terms of defensive backs like i think that's got to be They've got to rank towards the top of the nation in terms of strength and depth at and that position. That is how it happens now in the transfer portal is your deficiency becomes your strength now. Right, exactly. Within one offseason. Absolutely. Another area that Texas thinks they can make that flip from is the defensive pressure, right? So mm -hmm. Byron Murphy, Tavondre Sweat at defensive tackles were the strong suit. They're gonna, both going to get drafted in the NFL, but the edge pressure was lacking. Ethan Burke, I think, had the most sacks, which was five and a half, which mm -hmm. is not, a, it's nothing to scoff at, but it's not a crazy war daddy type of number. They've now gone Colin Simmons, who we were just talking to Greg Powers before the show started. Five star. Five star and is playing like that in spring practice. But Trey Moore, too, from UTSA, UTSA. Mm -hmm. right down the road, 17 and a half sacks last year. And they think with Colin Simmons and Trey Moore, like we're going to get that edge pressure, even when we have to split Anthony Hill, who was kind of an edge presence linebacker to mm -hmm. a traditional linebacker spot up for Jalen Ford now leaving. Yeah, and when we were talking to Powers about that earlier, so he watched uh, Steve Sarkeesian's press conference yesterday after their practice, and he was telling me this morning, he was like, yeah, he was putting Colin Simmons and Trey Moore kind of in that same bucket, right? Mm -hmm. So that means that we're probably going to see both of them start. So Colin Simmons making an immediate impact most likely at Texas, which is kind of crazy, but he's, he's scary. The other, he's good. You want to talk about scary guys? Kendrick Blackshear. Oh, from Alabama. From Alabama I'm com now. He's coming back, yeah. He's yeah. coming back to the great state of Texas, former Duncanville great. Probably the This whole team's Duncanville. <laughs> probably the, it rocks. Probably the scariest 15-year-old I've ever seen oh, in yeah. my life. Oh, yeah. Crazy. And now he's only gotten 20 pounds heavier, and he might honestly start for Texas because we talk about they lost Jalen Ford. David Benda is still there, who I am a big fan of David Benda's game, and he's also a six-year senior, so I think he has to play. Yeah. But if you put Anthony Hill, if you want to try to use him as an edge blitzer at some points, Kendrick Blackshire is your true typical Mike linebacker mm -hmm. that they might be putting down there. Right. Okay, now you love to talk about Texas because you're a Texas alum. <laughs> give, me a, give me three transfers, incoming transfers for Texas A&M. Texas A&M, all yeah, right. Yes, so who you think – probably gonna make an immediate impact well I gotta start number one and this is the right answer is Nick Skirton from Purdue Mallory mm -hmm. I think Nick Skirton's fallen under the radar mm -hmm. somehow this is the Big Ten sack leader yep. from last year mm -hmm. and when we talk about Texas A&M has lost all their defensive linemen they just reload coming with Nick Skirton at defensive end right now they also let me look at who else they got I know uh, Jabray Barber's out. I saw Jabray that Barber's news, out. which we'll, is huge We'll news. talk about wide receiver, but also Cassius Howell is an underrated name from Bowling Green on the defensive line oh, side okay, because right, he right. was tied for first in the Mid-American Conference in sacks too. So yeah. those two guys on the defensive line is someone to watch out for. Jabray Barber would have been my pick until he got injured. Mm -hmm. He looked like he was fighting for a number one wide receiver spot to kind of replace Evan Stewart. Now, he's not the talent that Evan Stewart was, but he – it uh, seemed like he could probably have that production. The other wide receiver that I think could make a big impact is Cyrus Allen. So he's from Louisiana Tech. And the thing about Colin Klein's offense when he comes to Texas A&M is, if you look back at Kansas State, most of the there's not one standout wide receiver ever on mm -hmm. those teams. They spread the ball out to the tight end. 
They spread it to three wide receivers. Everyone's kind of got 30 to 40 catches. And Texas A&M can do that now because they have Moose Muhammad, they have Noah Thomas, and they have, uh, who is the other wide receiver that they have that is still, oh, Donovan Green, the tight end. So they've got all those guys that they can throw to. But Cyrus Allen now fits in that picture very well. I could see him making immediate impact. And then I'm gonna keep it on the defensive side. We gotta talk about this a little bit with Jay Arnold coming up when we talked to him about the mm -hmm. spring football game. Des Ricks from Alabama at cornerback. Texas A&M took a big step back in their pass coverage game last year. Des Ricks is someone who's from IMG, went to Alabama. He can come in and immediately start. He's been injured a little bit throughout the spring practice. So is he a day one starter because of that injury? I don't know, but that defensive backfield is just crowded with transfers. You look at Will Lee from Kansas State, guys like that. And then also they have a dude from Troy, I believe. Don't let me get his name wrong. Which Debray Barber is Ma also from. <laughs> Marcus, no, Marcus Ratcliffe from San Diego State, not Troy Star. Oh, okay. Another big body safety right there with a lot of dudes who are returning on that team. A&M is that team where they've signed five stars and then they go into their freshman year and kind of go under the radar and are just developing for a year mm -hmm. and you almost forget about them. They've got DJ Hicks on that defensive line who was on the Rising Magazine from two years ago, who was a five-star at Katie Paytow. Yeah, no, you're right about that. They've got Bryce Anderson playing safety. He's been playing really well, but also um, Dalton Brooks at right. safety. From Shiner. From Shiner. Jared Kerr from Lexington. Mm -hmm. These guys have all been waiting in the wings and now it's their turn to step up. So that defensive back room is just so crowded. Right, right. Um, and yeah, we'll, we'll talk more about Texas A&M when we have Jay Arnold on. Um, but I want to get to the last um, team on here that I think has done the, one of the best in, in the state of Texas in terms of the transfer portal. And that's Texas State. And I'm sad that Ish can't be here. I'm so sad that and talk Ish can't about be that. here. Um, so I read, if you haven't read uh, Ish's piece on um, kind of the, the vibes of, of what spring looks like for the Bobcats, go read it on TexasFootball.com. But I was reading it, and he's totally right when he said that, like, the vibes this year just seem really, really high. I and put I them think, at the all vibes team. Oh, all, all vibes, vibes team. team. I think last year, I think with the addition of G.J. Kenny last year, I think vibes were already at a, an all-time high. But I think this year it – to me, just feels so much higher. And I think that starts with the transfer class that they've brought in. Would you agree? Yes, I think it starts with the transfer class, and it starts with the quarterback, Jordan McLeod. Mm -hmm. He's the Sun Belt Player of the Year, and we've been joking about it in the office. We need a nickname for this trio that Texas State has because they have Jordan McLeod, the other Ishmael from Ishmael Texas Lottie. State, Ishmati, mm -hmm. and Joey Hobart, who fantastic football players. If you saw them walking down the street, I don't know if you do a double take. They kind of look like they work in a sub shop <laughs> they sure in do. San Marcos, <laughs> but they will destroy you on the football field. Yes, 1,000%. Also, another guy from Texas State that I think is not getting enough buzz is Stephen Parker, a former South Oak Cliff star. Actually, Stephen Parker sacked me back in high school about no the hardest I've ever been hit in my life. Yes, there's still a video of it out there. He's still playing college football, and... He was a standout at Incarnate Word, and I think him going to Texas State could be, could be huge. I also think, um, I don't know if this went under the radar a little bit. I don't know, but they brought in a pair of running backs from UTEP. Mm -hmm. Deion Hankins and uh, Torres Burgess. Torres Burgess. Two of the, obviously, Deion Hankins was an all-conference player, right, last year for Conference USA. Mm -hmm. I think that's huge they brought those two in. Yes, they need those guys because Ishmael Mahdi, they need to use him more in the pass game. For sure. So – G.J. Kinney, Mac Lifwich, their offense, they're going to have some guys. Those are the guys who get you the tough yardage. Like Ishmael Mahdi, we talked about, not the most imposing guy, not the biggest guy to run in between the tackles. You need to get him out in space. Right. Torch Burgess and Deion Hankins, both guys that can go up the middle and get you those tough yards. They've been hurt a little bit. Jalen Jenkins is a name to watch out yes, to for from sure. Allen. Well, Washington State, correct? Is he was he at Washington State, okay, yeah, now transferred yeah. back to Texas State. Right, right, gotcha. So that is another team uh, that... I think has won the transfer portal. Would you say, okay, the winners are Texas, Texas A&M, and Texas State? Yeah, I think so. Do you have another one in mind that you think would, that could fit in that top four, 3.1, maybe? Ooh, I don't know. <laughs> Obviously, I think SMU does well every single year in the portal. I SMU mean, does well every yeah. single year. I think something I want to ask you, Mallory, as a North Texas alum, though, is, 
I wrote about this in my column a little bit. So the spring transfer portal window that's happening, the Power 4 fans are basically like, we can fix him, right? Anyone who is leaving their team right now is because they're not a culture fit or they're not gonna see a lot of playing time. So if you're taking on a, as a Power 4 team, I'm taking a guy, you're saying, we can fix him, we can make him work. Yeah. The group of five fans, it's kind of like no news is good news. Yeah, I did read your piece. I, I agree on it's that. It's like you're t you are a commoner in Winterfell in Game of Thrones right now, mm -hmm. and your coaching staff is the watchers on the wall, and no news is good news because there hasn't been a breach. But last year, we talked about North Texas, Jair Shorter and Larry Nixon both leave for Auburn. Mm -hmm. Or at UTSA, Zachary Franklin goes to Ole Miss. And we need to but, talk about too how some of these guys from group of five teams that are leaving this late in the process aren't catching on at the power four schools. Like Zachary Franklin. I was Franklin, gonna say, do you even like hear from, he really hear about those guys again? Zachary you know, Franklin Zagari, and Jair Zagari Zagari Franklin, no. you absolutely, I haven't, yeah, exactly. So I don't know. No, I think you're completely right. I think at the G5 level at this point, like no news is really good news. You know, you're working mm -hmm. on building your team and you're working on, um, creating kind of that culture and that that uh togetherness of your team right now and no, hopefully nobody else is leaving you know mm -hmm. exactly right all right we've talked to transfers now let's talk a little bit of spring game coming up because the spring game will settle much more news on the spring transfer portal after the spring game that's where you have the come to jesus meetings with your coaches you find out where you really stand or if someone stood out in the spring game another school comes in and tries to get him to transfer to their school we're going to see a lot more movement guys the transfer portal window is 30 days okay this upcoming saturday let's talk texas spring game because we're going to talk with jay arnold about the texas a m spring game but mm -hmm. mallory what is fans what should we take from spring games, do you think? Because I've got my answer. Well, I want to see what your answer is. I don't know. If I'm walking into a spring game and what am I looking for is, I don't know, the transfers, these new mm -hmm. guys that they're bringing in. You know, you know what everybody else looks like from last year, right? With who they have coming back. You can see that right there in person. I'm seeing how well the new guys gel with the old guys. Mm -hmm. I mean, what, what would you say? No, I think that's exactly right. I mean, for Texas, I do have a couple of questions here. So I got this. Let's talk about the pass rush again with Trey Moore. From Burnt Orange Nation, Westcott Eberts, he had an article really diving into Trey Moore's sack numbers. More than half the sacks came against teams with a 14 and 23 record last year. Now, part of that is just the American Athletics Com Athletic Conference competition but does that, do we think Trey Moore, he already ha was a little bit on the shorter side, didn't have the ideal length. Do we think he translates against a Texas offensive line like that? In terms of the defense, the defensive tackle spot, we believed it's Alfred Collins and Vernon Broughton the entire time, but they also brought the Arizona defensive tackle, Tioli Savea. I hope I pronounced that nice. right. I think I did. That sounded good. That, that sounded good. good. It, it, you sound confident. So. <laughs> <laughs> if you say anything confident, no one can call you out for exactly, it. Exactly. That's what I'm saying. So we see what he's, if he's going to be a starter when they come in, are there, or is it just going to be Vernon Broughton and Alfred Collins, who I know Mike Craven talked to uh, for the magazine side. That's what I'm really looking at in these spring games. The other thing is for fans, we're in spring game form. Spring game is about making sure your tailgating plan is perfect come fall. Okay, good one. Because you can't be rushing into week one, not knowing how the brisket's turning out, you know, not having the correct drinks around. This is a dry run for everyone. This is a dress rehearsal. Well, okay, here's the thing too. I mean, the dress rehearsal, you're not as nervous, right? You're yes. playing your, it's a spring game. The nerves are down. You're just excited to get back to football season. When game one hits of the season, the nerves come back on, right? The exactly. show, the show is happening. This is, this is the real deal. You get nervous. So if you can practice and hit it perfectly the first time, you'll be great for when the season rolls around. That's exactly right. Because once you get to the stadium in the spring game, I'm going to tell you what, about 10 minutes, you're going to want to leave. 
Oh, I know. That. I know. They are not that exciting to watch. There's They're, a lot of downtime. It's very vanilla. It's very vanilla. Not any kind of crazy play calling, so don't expect Sark to dig in his bag this week. Steve Sark <laughs> if it happens. The weather, pending the weather, because it could be kind of bad this weekend. Well, uh, we'll get Steve Sark is going to be running the Madden playbook that I run when I was like 10 years old. Yeah. At the spring game. <laughs> I was talking to Adam, our boss, who is a proud Texas fan. I said, Adam, what are you looking forward to in the spring game? He said, the best case scenario is it gets canceled due to rain. <laughs> I think Sark would agree with that. <laughs> and I think Sark would agree with that too. You're yeah, in the college absolutely. football playoff. You don't have anything. You're not trying to build any confidence. You're trying to hope no, no. one gets hurt out there. And honestly, what if Arch goes out there and does a Malik, Ma Malik Murphy performance from last year and lights the world on fire? You don't need all that hanging on your head. No, no, over you in the don't. Offseason. If it gets rained out, you know, whatever. That's fine. I'm hoping it doesn't for the fans, but I don't think it'd be the worst thing if that happened with Sark. No. Okay. I think it's about time to dial up Jay Arnold. Let me do some ads first before we talk to our good friend Jay. I'm talking to you guys about North Texas Honda dealers. The North Texas Honda dealers want to help you score some great deals and on award-winning Hondas. Stop by your helpful Honda dealer today or visit NorthNTXHondaDealers.com to learn more. And I'll just say, guys, from personal experience, I had a minivan in my family for about 16 years. Very reliable vehicle. You got kids going to sporting games. It's the best car for it. Everyone wants to hop in the minivan, throw their baseball bags back there, their football shoulder pads, things of that nature. You can't go wrong at North Texas Honda dealers. Next, we got Home Field Apparel. Home Field Apparel, guys, they've been so good to us. Me, Mallory, they both rock. have Home Field Apparel shirts. Hey, Mallory, let me, let's play a game with you. Why don't you just name a random college for me right now? Bowling Green. So I go on Home Field Apparel's website. I go up at the top to the schools. I see A through D. Here we go. I see, see Bowling it? Green right here. Let's go. Who, That's where awesome. else are you finding Texas, Texas State Bowling Green shirts? I bet you Indiana State's website. on there too. Uh, let's see. Wait, L O. Do your alphabet. Is it <laughs> is I in here? Uh, a B C D E F G H I. It's okay, in there. no, it's I've in the E K. It's okay. in the E K. Makes sense. Yep, there it is, right there, Indiana nice. State. Sorry, I, forgot. I had to sing my alphabet a little bit before <laughs> I saw it. Good practice. <laughs> That's Home Field Apparel, guys. North Texas Honda Dealers, two great sponsors. We'd love if you went and looked around with them, shopped around with them. All right. Jay Arnold, are you there? I'm here. You're here. Jay Arnold with the Aggie War Pod coming to talk a Woo. little bit of Texas A&M spring game with you, Jay. Jay, what, we talked about our plans for spring games. What's your plan as a fan? I'm interested. <laughs> uh, as a fan, my plan is to try to read as little into it as possible, mm. uh, knowing that that's not going to happen. <laughs> that, knowing you're going to draw big time conclusions from that. But Jay, I'm interested for you. You're a former college athlete at Texas A&M. How do you think spring games have changed from when you were there to what they are now in present day with the transfer portal and all that stuff? Yeah, I mean, there's no doubt it's changed massively. Uh, I, I personally never played in a spring game just because of injuries. Uh, but uh, just with the transfer portal, obviously some guys are entering it, you know, over the course of spring practice or guys are, are getting their first set of practices after entering it during the winter period. Mm -hmm. uh, and that, that's just kind of changed a lot. Uh, one thing we talk a lot about on Aggie Warpod is how continuity can affect a roster. Uh, and obviously, with the modern transfer portal, uh, continuity is something that you don't get as much of. Uh, but at the same time, these spring practices are important to establishing as much of it as you can. Mm -hmm. uh, so it, it's, again, we don't want to read too much into the conclusions, but seeing how a roster gels is, is probably the biggest takeaway uh, from a spring game and, and how the transfer portal has impacted it. Now, let's do a little bit of offensive defense. Let's first go to the offensive side of the ball. I am very curious to see what Colin Klein's offense looks like in this spring game. Because when I dive deep into the Colin Klein Kansas State numbers, I see there's only one year since 2018 where a quarterback had less than 78 rushing attempts. Connor Wigman's a great quarterback. He's not necessarily a running quarterback. What do you think? Are you excited to see what the Colin Klein offense looks like in this spring game? I'm I'm extremely excited just to see uh, what Con, uh, Con Klein's offense looks like. I mean, you touched on it there with 
uh, Connor Wegman, and, and maybe he's not a guy that you really want running some of the Kansas State uh, quarterback run stuff. Like me personally, I don't want to see quarterback power with Connor Wegman. Yeah, <laughs> uh, <laughs> but uh, it, it's. I think Colin Klein and, and his experience, I think he may change up depending on who's under center. And from what Mike Alco has said, obviously, uh, Connor Wegman seems like he's going to be the guy uh, as of right now. Uh, so I do think that you'll see a little bit of a different offense than from what Klein used at Kansas State when he was in Manhattan. Uh, again, I'm, I'm very excited to see exactly what it looks like, but I, I'm not – expecting a ton of uh, the quarterback run when Wegman's in there. Now, if Wegman goes down and, and somebody else has to step in, I do think you'll see the offense adapt. Mm-hmm. I think the adaptability is going to be the big key uh, in Con Klein's offense at A&M. And we talked about it earlier with Texas's spring game, but they're going to be running that Madden 10-year-old playbook probably, <laughs> keep it super vanilla yep. for yep. you in the spring game. Oh yeah, yeah. You're not going to get the uh, you know the uh, the Statue of Liberty and things of that nature uh, in the spring game. Uh, I, I do think it's going to be vanilla and and you know offensively and defensively, right? Like you're not going to get a lot of the blitzes uh, on the defensive side of the ball, the exotics that that uh, may be in the playbook and and offensively. I mean, it's going to be. Uh, pr- pretty A to B. So uh, this is, again, why we don't read too much into the spring game. <laughs> so for the defensive side of the ball, maybe not even just for this upcoming spring game, but just for the following season, and I feel like I know the defensive line for the most part. It- it's a lot of turnover, but I feel like you know DJ Hicks might be stepping up. Nick Skirton is a uh, proven commodity there. The defensive backfield is so jumbled to me with transfers and returning guys. If you had to right now just pick a starting backfield, could you do it? Absolutely not. Uh, <laughs> I, I definitely could not pick. I, and here's the thing. I mean, like you said, there's so much turnover in the back end. Uh, I, I can give you one starter, uh, okay. and that's Bryce Anderson. <laughs> yes. there, he's, he's the guy. I, I am willing to say that he is going to be a starter. Uh, it's just there's so much turnover, and then – you know, that's just a product of the modern age and, and what happens uh, with new coaching staffs in the transfer portal era. With that being said, I do think that my staff made it a point of uh, a very high importance to go out and get uh, guys to address the problems in the secondary and the portal. Uh, so it's going to be like that is the position group that I am most interested in seeing uh, on Saturday for the AM spring game. Well, who are some of those transfers you're excited about? Yeah, uh, so Marcus Ratcliffe out of San Diego uh, is definitely one. Donovan Saunders, uh, an FCS guy out of uh, Cal Poly, is, is somebody that I think uh, is a difference maker right away. And, and the thing, too, with those two guys, uh, and uh, as well with uh, Will Lee from Kansas State, is they're more of the lengthy corners that, that Mike Elko has liked at the position, mm-hmm. right? Uh, you, you see some coaches take different uh, approaches to the type of athletes they have at the corner position. I think Will Lee, Donovan Saunders, and uh, uh, I'm sorry, I'm blanking there. Uh, the San Diego State guy, Marcus Ratcliffe. Marcus Ratcliffe, Ratcliffe I blanked uh, on his name earlier. Yeah, too. yeah. Okay. I think they're all listed at 6'3 on the roster. Uh-huh. Uh, and, and that gives you kind of an insight into what Elko is looking at from uh, the corner position. Of course, that's not you know set in stone, right? But uh, it, it is a good peak. I mean, another guy who's not maybe part of that mold uh, as far as the typical Elko defensive back is uh, Dalton Brooks, who I think yes. is mm-hmm. has the potential to be a, a real playmaker uh, in the secondary somewhere. I'm interested to see where he fits in. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, it's, it's going to be interesting to see who the difference makers are in this position group. When you mentioned Dalton Brooks there, for me, when I get a read on A&M, it feels like they lead the nation in former five-star and four-stars that have taken a year of development, and everyone is no one is talking about them enough. And this might be a year where they can explode onto the seed. Do you get that read at all from Texas A&M? I, I definitely do. And then I feel like the development is also part of what was maybe missing in the Jimbo Fisher era mm-hmm. uh, as far as you're getting these high-level recruits, but it just seems like they're never really getting over the hump. 
Uh, and I think that's part of why Elko was brought in, right? Like, it, he seems like a guy that really develops players well. Uh, and I think we saw that in his previous tenure when he was defensive coordinator at AM, uh, as well as at Duke. Uh, but yeah, I mean, there's, it seems like there's a lot of guys on this roster who are primed to be developed into big time playmakers. Dalton Brooks, a guy that you mentioned earlier, DJ Hicks at, at defensive tackle. These feel like guys that uh, could really take another step uh, under Mike Elko this year. And Jay, I know the spring transfer portal window, it's more about retaining your roster than going out and actively getting pieces. But is there a position group you think Texas a might target to, let's just get some more depth here at this spot? Yeah, I think the trenches are always a place that you need a little more depth. And, and, and in A&M's case, I think at defensive tackle in particular, uh, I feel pretty good about like the top group at defensive tackle. But again, you never know what type of injuries are going to happen. And, and it's a position that you'll take a beating throughout the SEC season. Uh, my guess is that like DJ Hicks and, and Gabriel Brownlow Dendy are going to be starters on the interior. Uh, but I do think that you'll need some more depth around A&M uh, there. And, uh, you know, I'd look for them to add like a defensive tackle in the portal. Uh, maybe running back is another position that, that may be a little bit thin at times. So that could be another area that they address after the spring game. Well, Jay, it's always great to talk to you. Are you going to be in College Station for the spring game? <laughs> I don't know yet. It's, it's an easy trip up from Houston, but I, I may end up just kind of uh, – watching it on tv i i feel like uh you know as much as i love being around the game sometimes you can actually see a little bit more uh on the broadcast than you see in person right. Uh, exactly but, right uh, i'll be a game time decision I guess. <laughs> I love that. once you get that all 22 angle out there when you're back home monitoring from the man cave <laughs> <laughs> exactly well jay it's great to talk to you uh Excited for this upcoming season, excited for the spring game on Saturday. Uh, you can tune in to Jay on the Republic of Football Podcast Network at the Aggie War Pod. Thanks, brother. Thanks for having me. Thanks, Jay. He rocks. He does rock. That is Jay Arnold with the Aggie War Pod. I think he, smart football fans like Jay, know in their mind that they cannot read anything into the spring well, football game. But you're battling that inner demon where you want to just make all the conclusions right but he also played too so that's a little bit different like he's he's obviously been on both sides right mm -hmm. so like he he like he's gotten both perspectives on it right well and i thought that's what's so interesting about it because when he was playing back in the johnny manziel era right. like the spring game was hey just a guy has a good game that's great going into the summer but now the transfer portal is just open for two weeks after the spring right. game. So it's literally an audition to like, are you gonna stay on this team or are you gonna try to go to a different spot right away? There's so much roster turnover there. That's why spring games have become very interesting, yeah. I think. I was a, this is kind of in relation to what we're talking about, but I was, <laughs> I was grabbing to, I was walking to grab my charger from my desk before the show and I look at Powers and he just, he kind of looks stressed and I said, man, the transfer portal gives me anxiety. <laughs> and yes. he was like, yeah, yeah, it does. And I'm like, I just, I try. I'm trying to keep up with it all. But there's just so, like you said, so much turnover in such a short amount of time. You know, I mean, like, how many guys do you think entered the portal in the past two days? I mean, you can't count them. It's so can't many of them. can't count them on all of our hands combined. Right, exactly. Office. It's It gives me a lot of anxiety. I told you before the show, <laughs> when the show started, how nervous I am. My phone, it's like an Amber Alert that goes off when I see a I know, you've got to have, exactly. I know, you got to have all the notifications on for it. <laughs> but keep it locked in on TexasFootball.com for all yes. the transfer news. I think that's all we've got today. Mallory, anything else we needed to cover? Um, no, but I do. I don't know how many of you guys know about this, but if you go to texasfootball.com um, under our college tab, we actually keep track of the entire Texas transfer portal. So yes. all of the FBS teams in Texas, we have all the names listed on there of who has left and who has come to the program in terms of transfers. So um, if you want to – you know, good resource to keep up with. Uh, check out texasfootball.com under the college tab, and it's uh, the tracking the transfer portal college or something football like that. Transfer portal tracker. tracker. And actually, yeah. as soon as we're done with this, I'm going to go put Dominic Probably Williams so. and Sam Brown in there. Exactly, exactly. It's a great resource if you're uh, if you're looking to keep up with who's coming and leaving Texas. Well, keep it locked on texasfootball.com. Not only the transfer portal, we also have insider notes from all of our magazine stop. Correct. Ish has him from Texas State. Craven's been pumping them out. He just dropped a Texas Tech insider piece. Got some updates on Baron Morton and the quarterback situation there, why he Ooh. isn't playing in spring, in spring practice anymore. I put one out about Sam Houston. 
and Corey, as always, doing excellent work right now, breaking news on the non-FBS mm -hmm. side. So for Carter Yates, Mally Hartley, that'll wrap it up for the Republic of Football podcast. Remember, as always, go Rutgers. Go Rutgers. How are they doing in the portal? I've not seen a lot of movement. I haven't either. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, go Rutgers. Uh,